and welcome back to Adventures with Ariel. Did y'all have a Goofy movie on VHS? I did, and oh boy, my family wore that thing out. Seriously, at my house, we watched it over and over and over again. I mean, what's not to love? It's a heartwarming coming of age story starring a legendary Disney character with an iconic soundtrack sung by arguably the greatest pop star to ever exist, Powerline. Released in 1995, the film hit theater smack dab in the middle of Disney's Renaissance period. And growing up, I saw a Goofy movie as being the greatest film produced by the Disney Animation Studio. But it wasn't until years later that I discovered that a Goofy movie, along with many other childhood classic, I mean movies, were produced by an entirely different studio. Disney Toon Studios, a now extinct overseas studio known for producing a few nostalgic masterpieces and a lot of cash grabs. <sighs> it's time to talk about Disney Toon Studios. Our story begins in 1984 with the arrival of Michael Eisner as the head of the Walt Disney Company. In addition to his desire of bringing Disney animation out of a dark age, Eisner also wanted to bring cartoons to television. You see, up to that point, Disney had never really invested in television media outside of the live action format. So Eisner decided to create Walt Disney Television Animation, a new branch of the company based based in Glendale, California. They were responsible for a lot of your favorite childhood cartoons, including Gummy Bears, DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, and Goof Troop. Right off the bat, the cartoons were incredibly successful, so much so, in fact, that new studios opened in Australia, Japan, and France to increase production. The new French studio was commissioned to create the first feature film based on a TV series, DuckTales the Movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. There was only one American animator who worked on the film. Larry Rappel. Rappel worked on Disney shorts and movies before DuckTales, but for many of the European animators, this was their first time working on an animated film. Regardless, I think they did a pretty good job. Treasure of the Lost Lamp was released in 1990 as a Disney Movie Tunes film. This was another one of my childhood favorites, so I was disappointed to find out that it actually wasn't a financial success. Getting beaten at the box office by the likes of Problem Child. Problem Child? Really? Well, at least it got positive reviews. In the meantime, Walt Disney Animation Studios had again found box office success with 1989's The Little Mermaid. And out of this success came an original, brilliant idea. Disney would turn its most popular feature films into animated series. So, a few years later, The Little Mermaid and Aladdin were brought to television. Why do I bring this up, you ask? Well, for the Aladdin series, the higher-ups at Disney had the other brilliant idea to combine the five pilot episodes into a direct-to-video film titled The Return of Jafar. Released on VHS in 1994, the ahem film was a huge success, selling 10 million copies in the US and raking in $300 million worldwide. Disney had a gold mine on their hands and you best believe they took full advantage of it. Now, I should note that this sequel and the sequels that followed were not made by the French studio, but instead the Australian studio I mentioned earlier. Return of Jafar was released as a Disney video premiere film, not not a movie tunes film. Huh, this is getting confusing. Okay, so all of the international studios were under the Walt Disney Television umbrella, with Australia producing Disney video premiere films, aka the terrible direct to video sequels, and France producing movie tunes films, the far superior films based off of television shows revolving around iconic Disney characters, i.e., DuckTales and Goof Troop. So, while Australia was working on Return of Jafar, France worked on a goofy movie. And speaking of a goofy movie, well, this film did much better than the DuckTales movie. It was a minor hit for Disney, grossing $35 million at the box office. And while the film didn't get great reviews, it's one of those that any kid from the 90s will finally remember and defend until their dying breath. I mean, who doesn't like a goofy movie? Seriously, if you don't like a goofy movie, then please explain why in the comment section below. Oh wait. Okay, so meanwhile, the money-making sequel machine was in full effect churning out more pointless direct-to-video sequels like Aladdin and the King of Thieves, The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, and Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Okay, so some of them were better than others, but you can tell that they were all a clear downgrade from the company's mainstream animation. Like, these were television quality. Heck, a few of them were nothing more than a combination of shorts from cancelled
canceled cartoon series. Like, they weren't even intended to be a movie in the first place. Uh, I could make a whole video on the sequels alone, but I'll spare you. The short version is that most of these sequels were cheaply done and lacked original storytelling, but of course, they sold like hotcakes. Come 2003, and Disney made some drastic changes to this operation. For one, the Australia studio became the main production hub of a new division known as Disney Toon Studios, exclusively dedicated to producing direct-to-video sequels and spin-offs of feature animation productions. The other international studios closed, and the main animation studio in California was converted to an entirely computer-animated production. So yeah, Disney Toon Australia quickly became the only in-house Disney animation studio still actively using traditional animation. How tragic. But the show must go on. And onward it did. Disney Toon sequels like Return to Neverland and The Jungle Book 2 were, believe it or not, now getting theatrical releases. Both of these films were trashed by critics, but made bank at the box office, making well over $100 million off of a $20 million budget. So everything was going swell, right? Uh, not exactly. Come 2006, Disney announced that it was closing Disney Toon Studios Australia after 17 years of operation with its final feature being Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time. The closing was attributed to the rising cost of animation production in Australia, but nonetheless, Disney Toon Studios would prevail, continuing to produce animated films after the closure by outsourcing to third-party companies, including Rough Draft Korea, Wang Film Productions, Kennedy Cartoons, Toon City, and San Wu, among others. And one year later, something amazing happened. John Lasseter, new head honcho of Disney Animation and Disney Toon Studios canceled all of the direct-to-video projects that were in development, including sequels to Snow White, Dumbo, Pinocchio, The Aristocats, Meet the Robinsons, and ah, Chicken Little. Thank goodness we didn't get a Chicken Little too. am I right? The studio shifted from Disney sequels and spin-offs to original franchises like Disney Fairies and Planes. Both of these properties thrived for years, with Planes getting two theatrical releases that performed extremely well and sold a bunch of merchandise. But in June of 20. 2018, Disney announced that they would be shutting down Disney Toon Studios immediately, resulting in the cancellation of a third Planes movie and layoff of 75 animators and staff members. So what happened? Well, a few different things. Like, some people suspect that it had to do with the departure of John Lasseter. Yep, the head honcho left the company following allegations of sexual misconduct, and the announcement was made shortly after Pete Docter and Jennifer Lee assumed his duties as as CCO. Then again, IndieWire reported that the closure was unrelated to the promotions of Dr. and Lee. So, who really knows? Another likely reason is, of course, the decline of Disney Toon's bread and butter, the direct-to-video market. It's virtually been non-existent since streaming services have made it possible for content to be produced directly for streaming, bypassing the physical product altogether. Heck, the Disney Toon's Wikipedia page is evidence enough that their demise was a long time coming. Look at this. They were releasing Fairy and Plains films consistently every year since 2008. And then after 2015, nothing. But with that being said, the closure of Disney Toon Studios truly marked the end of an era. A controversial era, and for the most part, a mediocre era, but an era nonetheless. Direct-to-video sequels were huge in the 90s and played an important role in many childhoods, including mine. Yeah, I remember watching these things at birthday parties, schools, sleepovers, you name it, everyone was watching them. Heck, even Land Before Time and American Tale got in on the craze. And hey, they weren't all bad. Most of them were, but not all. So for me personally, the end of Disney Toons was one that was bittersweet. And despite my hate for the sequels of yesteryear, I will always be thankful for Disney Toons for blessing us with this masterpiece right here. So let me know in the comments if you liked any of the Disney sequels, and also comment down below if you had ever even heard of Disney Toons before watching this video. I mean, I hadn't even heard of them until like a year ago, so no judgment here. Also, if you learned something new today, please be sure to give this this video a huge thumbs up, as well as hit that subscribe button down below for new Disney content every single week. Alright y'all, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a magical day!